Hello everyone, and welcome to our Sonic Heroes Team Sonic Tool Assisted Speedrun. My name is Malio. And my name is Thales. This TAS completes the Team Sonic story in 36 minutes and 1.23 seconds. After 343 days of work, we are very happy to show off our work. For more information on Tool Assisted Speedruns, please visit TASvideos.org. For other versions of this TAS, such as a version without commentary, please see the video description below. To start off the TAS, you will immediately notice that we repeatedly kick and switch between characters. This trick is called kick excelling, and it allows us to build up a tremendous amount of speed quickly. This is done by kicking with Sonic, switching to Tails and back to Sonic. Normally, there's a cooldown for kicks, but switching to Tails and back to Sonic removes this cooldown. Throughout the level, we can abuse level geometry to gain height quickly, and cladding with knuckles is used throughout the TAS to minimize speed loss mid-air and to cross large gaps. We can use a trick called loop speed to cause Sonic to fly sideways and cross large gaps. Then, we can again abuse level geometry to gain enough height to bypass the first bobsled section. To explain loop speed, when we performed a jump dash mid-air with Sonic, the game tried to pull Sonic into the loop when he wasn't directly above the loop. This results in Sonic being pulled downwards with the same angle of gravity that he had when he started the jump dash. The platforms here rise out of the water, but because we have so much speed, we reach the platforms before their animation is done. As a result, we have to land on their invisible hitboxes, which don't rise along with the platform. Because we have so much speed approaching this cannon, we actually manage to skip the animation of Tails jumping into the cannon. This causes us to fall earlier from the cannon, and we can just kick Excel below the dash rings. You can fly above the trigger for this bobsled. However, there is no solid floor collision to stand on. Bobsleds work on a position-based system, meaning that they can move without any solid floor collision. We were able to stand on in the previous bobsled area because it is accessible to Team Chaotix. And for the very end of the stage, we can again use loop speed to skip straight to the goal ring, cutting off about 15 seconds of the stage. One trick we can use at the beginning of Ocean Palace is a light dash cancel. We can press B with Sonic to lock onto a set of rings. This causes our speed to instantly jump up. To regain control of Sonic and continue kick excelling, we can switch to Tails and back to Sonic. We can again use loop speed to clear this large gap. Immediately after, we can perform a door clip by gaining enough speed and then flying his tails right before colliding with the door. This works because Tails gets placed slightly in front of the door and brings Sonic and Knuckles through with him. An upcoming trick we will be using is called a Bob Boost. To set this up, we have to fight as Tails and get Sonic hit on the first frame touching the ground. In this stage, the game still thinks that Sonic is in flight formation when he gets knocked out. As a result, if we try to fly with Tails with a wall in the way, Tails will be displaced perpendicular to the wall and will fly at a speed proportional to the distance between Sonic and Tails at the start of the flight. We managed to land at the very end of the stage, much farther than the normal landing spot in the real-time speedrun route. This was actually a variation of the normal bop boost in which we got both Sonic and Knuckles hit on the first frame that we landed. For the case of Ocean Palace, we were only able to get as far as we did by using this variation, we still aren't quite sure about the differences in behavior between these two variations of bot boosts, but we imagine that Sonic and Knuckles' bot boosts can get farther in some cases. We started this boss fight by using the RTA strategy, in which you'll go back to the previous beach and lure the Egg Hawk onto the beach so that you have enough time to kill him in one cycle. However, we actually discovered it's possible to fire dunk him right away rather than go all the way back. While fire dunking, we somehow managed to deal 63 damage in a single hit, which helped to speed up this boss fight tremendously. We imagine this was caused by Tails getting stuck inside the cockpit hitbox. And with that, we move on to Grand Metropolis. Piece of cake! Too easy! Looks like Eggman escaped into the city. 
Eggman's robots are taking control of everything. Let's find Eggman and show him the real power of teamwork. We can start Grey Metropolis with a light dash cancel to build speed. Just keep the first loop, we glide underneath the side of the loop and land back on the floor. We can then glide past the first laser barrier and perform a door clip to bypass the second barrier. We grab a level up for Sonic later. When going inside, we can glide into the corner of the window and use an inverted bounce to reduce our height quickly. From there, we can bop boost past the first bridge. To be able to switch to Sonic earlier, we get hit by an enemy and then use a light dash cancel to immediately get our speed back. After performing a few door clips, we can perform another bop boost. However, because we are on the ground after we bop boost, we can switch to Sonic and maintain a crazy amount of speed. Because we got level 3 Sonic, we can activate the pole by jump dashing rather than using a pool tornado. At the top, it's faster to jump off and dash than to let the normal pole jump animation play. After kick excelling for a few seconds, we can again use a jump dash to activate the second pole and jump off and dash at the end. To finish Grand Metropolis, we perform another Sonic and Knuckles bot boost to reach the goal ring. By colliding with the building wall above the goal ring, we were able to convert our forward speed into falling speed, allowing us to fall to the goal ring much faster than normal. To start off power plants, we can gain speed by light dash cancelling. We're also able to skip the small globed section by gliding off the side of the ramp and we can use an inverted bounce to fall back down. From there, we can skip the loop sections by gliding off the side and bouncing off the top of the ramp. Since a lot of the stage requires you to repeatedly jump to higher platforms, we can use a trick called flight excel jumps to gain height faster. Flying the frame before you land allows you to jump at a much faster vertical speed. We want to get two Tails level ups because level 2 Tails will allow us to one shot the enemies in the upcoming elevator sections. In addition, we can fly with Tails and use a Thunder Shoot to allow us to fly at a constant height for a short period of time. From there, we can perform a Flight Exo Boost, in which we press A again at the very end of the flight to gain a bit more height and go above the flight height limit. These elevator sections are essentially auto scrollers. With no known way of being able to skip these sections, we instead chose to mess around for entertainment. With level 2 Tails, we can quickly take out the flying enemies with a Thunder Shoot. At the end of the elevator, we can use a Thunder Shoot right before landing above. This causes the flight formation to become detached, which results in Tails getting a decent speed boost upon landing. We'd like to talk a bit about some of the scripts we've used to make this TAS. We used a custom version of the Dolphin Emulator, which allows for Lua scripts. Through these scripts, we can monitor addresses in the game such as speed, position, etc. But most importantly, we can use scripts to automate certain sequence of inputs for us. We primarily used a script that automatically performs kick excels for us, which is helpful since we ended up performing 2028 kick excels throughout the entire run. In addition, we also used a go-to position script that calculates the best analog stick position to maintain a certain angle as we approach a set position throughout stages. Since we were able to mess around during the elevator sections, we got to show off and learn about a bunch of weird mechanics throughout the game, such as Sonic somehow falling right through the floor and Sonic being sent into the air when kicking near a set of rings. Then we can again use a thunder boost to gain speed at the end of the elevator. By interrupting a blue tornado with a rocket excel action, Sonic initiates a kick, maintaining his momentum. That allows us to perform a mid-air upwards kick as we approach the first set of enemies, climbing the section way faster than we normally would. By touching the spring from outside the cage, we were able to take the spring without Sonic being in the spring jump state, and this allowed us to collide with the wall at the top, which managed to cancel all our vertical speed. For this Team Bros fight, our goal is to knock them off stage as quickly as possible. 
This can be done in only a few seconds by performing a blue tornado to stun them backwards. And just to be entertaining, we also decided to fall off stage with them. Are you playing with that girl's heart? Marriage? No way! One important detail about pinball tables is that when you switch characters, instead of the new character keeping the same position as your previous character, you instead move to wherever that new character is on the pinball table. We can abuse this mechanic to skip most of Casino Park and Bingo Highway. We first let Tails fall out of bounds. Punching with Knuckles causes Tails to rise back up really fast. While Tails is rising above the pinball table, we can roll onto the table and switch Tails. This causes us to move to Tails' position way above the table. From there, we can fall straight to the next table. We start with an identical setup to the previous table. We can jump to have Tails spin around Knuckles, then we can roll onto the table and teleport to Tails. Allowing Tails to fall and then spin him around Knuckles causes the radius of Tails' spin to increase significantly, proportional to how far below the map Tails was. If set up properly, this can allow us to fall directly to the goal ring. That was tight! At the start of Pingo Highway, we switch to Tails. All characters move at the same speed on the pinball table, but Tails falls at the slowest rate, allowing us to land much further when flying off the table. Even though we hit an invisible wall, we still manage to build up enough speed to perform a door clip. Once we break the glass floor panel, we can begin setting up for the Bingo Highway skill. To get Tails to fall as soon as possible, we switch to Sonic and then back to Knuckles. From there, we perform a triangle dive to immediately bring Tails towards Knuckles, and due to our facing angle, he'll begin to fall out of bounds. The gold ring on this stage is very far away from us, so we need to make Tails' spinning circle around Knuckles incredibly large. To accomplish this, we can stay on the pinball table while Tails is falling. Landing on a platform will result in Tails falling for about 1700 units before stopping. However, he will continue to fall so long as we are on the pinball table. Once he is sufficiently far enough below the map, we can land on the platform, wait a bit, and then cause Tails to start spinning around Knuckles. Landing back on the pinball table means we can switch to Tails and warp to his position. Since most of the stage is downhill, we have quite a long fall to take before reaching the goal ring. Luckily, we were able to make use of a go-to position script so that we could make sure we're taking the shortest possible path to the goal ring. In addition, we also had to avoid some kill planes, as we end up getting decently close to later portions of the stage as we fall. And to finish off the stage, we made sure to get a bingo. At the beginning of the Robot Carnival cutscene, there is actually one frame where you can kick with Sonic. If you successfully kick, then you are able to control Sonic for a few seconds afterwards. If you move around, this causes Sonic, Tails and Knuckles' bodies to become disconnected from the animated heads used for the cutscene. That's right, for these cutscenes, they just overlay an entirely different head model on top of each character's body, which allows for a pretty scary looking cutscene to follow. This boss is essentially an auto-scroller, and in order to progress, we have to eliminate each enemy wave as fast as possible. For the first two waves, we just used Sonic's jump dash to finish off the enemies. By the end of the second wave, we manipulated two level ups for Tails. This will allow Tails' thunder shoot to one-shot all enemies in the third, fourth, and fifth waves. The path Sonic and Knuckles take during a thunder shoot is somewhat random, but their movement can be influenced by moving the analog stick in different directions. By this point, we now have level 3 Knuckles. With this level, Knuckles can triple punch the ground and send fireballs raining around the stage. 
This can be used to pretty much instantly kill every enemy in each wave. Unlike RTA, we don't make use of the Team Blast attack here. This is overall slower in real time, however, most RTA runners use in-game time to compete for the best run. Team Blast freezes the in-game timer during its animation, so RTA runners aren't penalized from using it, and actually benefit from using Team Blast over normal attacks. After a few more waves, Eggman runs out of enemies and Robot Carnival is over. Don't get too excited, boys. Those were the easy ones. All right. Making robots is the same as breaking them. To start off the stage, we optimize acceleration on the rail by switching between Sonic and Knuckles repeatedly while holding B. This is possible because both Sonic and Knuckles do their crouch animation resulting in a small boost of speed each time the characters are switched, but as soon as we get to a high enough speed, keeping Sonic as the activated character is faster. While jumping off the first rail, we once again abuse the level's geometry to get more downward speed. When there's a curve on the rail, we retain more of our speed if we follow the rail's tilt with our analog stick. After getting more height with the level's geometry, we get to the spot of the first buff boost of the stage. The real-time speedrun of this game also does a buff boost in this spot, however, we land on a different location. By making Sonic get it as we land on the flapper shock, we will once again activate a buff boost state. This time, we can get enough distance to fall down to the goal ring. Was tight. To build up speed, we first use rail acceleration by switching between Sonic and Knuckles. From there, we glide from the next rail to the next platform. We then have to wait a bit for the egg pawn to get close enough to the edge of the platform such that Sonic falls off the edge when he gets hit. Since we now have a wall in between Tails and Sonic, we can bot boost to the last cannon of the stage. This cannon is cycle based, meaning any improvement at the start of the stage will not result in any actual time save, unless we were to get an earlier cycle. That thing's loaded with Eggman's weapons. Eggman, you're finished! We can defeat the first phase of the Egg Albatross by repeatedly punching with Knuckles. For the second phase, in order to be able to attack it for long enough mid-air, we first move backwards to lure the Albatross towards us. After it charges towards us, it is stationary long enough for us to fire the in one cycle. We also had to make sure that Sonic bounces back towards Knuckles after every fire dunk so that we could dunk again right after. Then with one last fire dunk, we can one-shot the last phase of the Albatross. Eggman, you'll never beat us!
To start out the stage, we first build up speed with rail acceleration. For the loop, we hold neutral on the analog stick to break Sonic out from the automated section. Then we briefly hold a certain angle to change Sonic's angle of movement. This causes him to fly out the side of the loop, and we can perform loop speed. This loop speed allows us to immediately land for a bot boost. By activating the bot boost in a position that barely made the bot boost still work, the game thought that we landed back on the platform where we initiated the trip. This prevented the flight state from activating, so we could keep more of our speed and make our way to the goal ring. We can avoid traversing up some platforms by using a glide and bouncing upwards off of the stage's collision. Right afterwards, we can clip through the bottom of the loop and perform loop speed. Through careful changes in our angle while falling, we were able to maintain a skewed gravity angle long enough to land on the last platform after the vines. It is possible to buck boost off the egg hammer robot back there. However, the buck boost does not drop us off in a fast location. In order to buck boost off this jellyfish, we have to thundershoot it in order to lower it enough so that it can hit Sonic. We were able to bot boost at an angle that can drop us off in the tunnel up ahead. From there, we can glide to the top of the tree. By getting Sonic to rejoin the flight formation on the same frame that we get hit mid-air, we were able to obtain a bot boost state mid-air and bot boost all the way to the middle of the alligator vine section right before the end of the stage. Much like Team Rose after Power Plant, Team Dark can be taken out instantly. This time, due to their slightly different movement at the start of the battle, we can knock them off with a properly timed Thundershoot. Hey guys, chill out! Sonic, you sure this is the right way? I saw Shadow and Eggman head this way. This has got to be the right way. But it's so spooky here. Maybe that's the ghost of Shadow we saw earlier. Stop it, no At the start of Hang Castle, it's possible to bot boost to the area of the stage that the teleporter drops you off at. However, due to the fact that you fall for so long, it's faster to take the teleporter normally. In this stage, teleporters appear to make the stage flip upside down, this gimmick is made possible by utilizing two variations of the stage that run parallel to one another and are connected by teleporters. After kicking off the side of the loop, we can jump up the stairs and use a fire dunk right above the rail to easily cancel our vertical speed and begin riding forward along the rail. In addition, we can use an inverted bounce against the right pillar to fall at a faster speed. To regain speed after taking the teleporter, we use a thunder boost right before landing. From there, we can glide off of the downward sloped path to fall at a faster rate. We can set up a bot boost that takes us all the way to the tunnel before the downward section. For this last section, we managed to clip through the first quarter pipe, which saves a few frames. However, we were not able to clip through the other two pipes. At the end, we can kick instead of taking the final rank to reach the goal ring much faster.
was tight! At the start of the stage, we can do a light dash cancel and a sequence of kick axles to build up enough speed to clip through the first two doors. After activating the teleporter, however, we lose all of our speed, so we need to perform a rocked axle to clip through the next door and the doors that come after. Right after taking the teleporter, we have to briefly wait for the pumpkin ghost to spawn so we can set up a bop boost with it. This bop boost manages to skip a bobsled section and allows us to fall back and bounce further into the stage. For the next section, we clip through some more doors and get into Team Dark section. With a series of flight exo jumps and a thunder shoot, we can barely activate the bubs that up above. To activate the next bobsled a bit faster than normal, we glide off the side with Knuckles and spin Sonic around in a way such that Sonic triggers the bobsled. Jump now. Jump now. Jump. After getting level 3 Knuckles and with some precise movement, we were able to take out all the enemies here in only 2 punches. On the web rail, we were able to avoid switching paths by jumping right before the web branches off. The fireballs from level 3 Knuckles' triple punch can actually push Knuckles slightly. By doing another triple punch in a specific spot, Knuckles' hitbox can be pushed inside the cage just enough to trigger the teleporter. That was tight! Just like with the Robot Carnival opening cutscene, we can kick with Sonic to gain control during the cutscene and manipulate the characters on screen. What a joke! What did you say? Now I'm really mad! Get them! For the first wave, we can just use a series of jump dashes while you also make sure we get two level ups to reach level 2 levels. Next, we need to get Sonic to level 2 as he can one shot a series of turtle enemies. After fire dunking on the top of the cage, we can take the teleporter to the next segment. With some precise jump dashes, we can one-shot all the turtles. The egg pawns in the following wave spawn one after the other, so we have to use several triple punches to eliminate them all. To kill the last one quicker, we can collide with it using tails. With one last triple punch, we're able to take the cannon to the next area. It's worth noting that it's possible to clip inside these cages and activate the cannons and teleporters much earlier than intended. However, no enemies will spawn, forcing us to complete each wave as intended. After landing, we can take out the next few waves with a few triple punches. After taking the last teleporter, we can use level 3 tails to instantly kill all the flappers by thunder shooting. For the following wave, we can take out the center enemies with a triple punch, and then ride the rails and use jump dashes to take out all the rhino tanks. For the last wave before the cannon, it's a bit faster in real time to use a team blast. The egg pawns in this wave spawn very high in the air, so we have to wait a long time to kill the last one. The team blast hitbox extends further up and can kill the last enemy much earlier. For the last fight of the boss, we can use a light speed attack from the Team Blast cooldown to quickly take out each enemy off the wave. Alright! Not a very bright move for a genius.
All right, Eggman. Let's get this party started. Wow. We're flying way high. They're not small. Come on, this is nothing. Let's right at the start of Egg Feet, we can use the explosion of the leftmost cannon to set up a bot boost. This gets us to another set of enemies where we can set up another bot boost. By extending our flight with a flight exo boost, we can get enough distance to reach the first propeller in the stage. By pressing B to drop off the propeller, it's possible to kick in mid-air to reach the airship earlier than intended. After building up some speed, we can abuse the level collision to gain a lot of height and skip this flying section. We can then kick Excel along the perimeter of the ship to blow it up. We jump before riding the second fan in order to gain vertical speed quickly. From there, we can ride the fans into a box boost that takes us directly to the last airship. By doing a team blast right before the explosion animation, the in-game timer freezes but the stage still finishes normally. This reduces our final time for the stage, and also turns the entire stage black as a side effect. That was tight! This must be Eggman's headquarters! The airbase! After the second rail, we glide around the dash ring because it sends you flying way above the egg hammer. We can bop boost off this enemy and skip a few seconds of platforming up ahead. Once we land, we can kick Axon and spin Sun around Knuckles to remove the barrier. As we hop between platforms, we use Thunder Boost to get a lot of speed back. We can then ride the rail down to our next bop boost spot. After landing from the bot boost, we can immediately set up another bot boost that'll take us directly to the gold ring. No problem! Looks like checkmate, Doctor. Hm. Enough of this. 
We start off the boss by kicking Axel in forward in order to grab two level ups for Tails, otherwise we can't damage the Egg Emperor. In addition, this will cause him to dash forward. When he does this, he can thunder shoot forward, manipulate Sonic and Knuckles such that they get stuck in his hitbox, and we can end put recording. Tails plummets to his death, however Sonic and Knuckles defeat the Egg Emperor before Tails finishes dying. This results in the game prioritizing the Egg Emperor defeat cutscene, and the game is finished. This was a lot of fun to work on, and we are very happy and entertained with the result. We would like to shout out some people from the Sun Heroes community that helped us during the creation of this DAS. We want to thank Sewer for encoding the video for us, and Just Lemrez, GPro, Sewer, Deku, Hazel, and Critical Sid for actively providing ideas as we progress through the task. And finally, thank you all so much for watching.